Okay, it's a quarter past one on the night of the 25th, morning of the 26th of June 2024. And I'm just jumped into the van here to take a, a break from shooting. Um, I've just witnessed another record breaking e event in the night sky department this year. The I've just seen the best noctilus and clouds I've ever seen in solar maximum. <laughs> the irony of it is, I, there's been a lot of displays recently and I've been clouded out for them. The, a few nights ago there was a fairly decent one that was seen over parts of the UK and I was clouded out for it too. I was beginning to lose faith I was going to see anything good this season. Then tonight the forecast was completely clear and looked promising. And I was actually working on a website report from the best NLC display I've ever seen in my life back in 2009 during the solar minimum period. So I was re-editing those images and doing a write-up on it. And for those of you who don't know, excuse me, noctilus and clouds are closely tied to the solar cycle. So when you approach solar minimum, and that's when the roars tend to wane down and become less prolific, the NLCs tend to get stronger and brighter and, and manifest more often. So that's the best time to see NLCs. Then when you get to solar maximum, the Earth's upper atmosphere is bombarded by UV radiation and uh, the upper atmosphere and the mesosphere is warmer so it's harder for ice crystals to form around meteoritic material to form these NLCs. So the NLCs around solar maximum tend to be sparse, few and far between and weak. You get the all good display but usually nothing remarkable. Uh, but this year the, the NLCs have been defying the odds and getting better and better and tonight I looked out I looked out the window and I just literally just after eleven o'clock the sky was still bright. The whole flipping sky was covered with NLCs directly overhead. This reminded me of 2009 all over again. Uh, literally in the west, right through into the north, nearly northeast. Uh, literally overhead. I didn't take any hand measurements or anything. I was so excited. I just literally grabbed the camera gear, grabbed my dog Rue here, I just raced out the road and then I pulled up here at Loch Fay. Uh, I ran up the side of the lock and just went over to the stones near the water and I got my DSLR set up again shooting some images in the time lapse. To tell you the truth, I think the first sequence was out of focus. <laughs> I don't know, I left it running and I put the drone up and the view of the drone was spectacular. The drone video footage and the images hopefully it'll be good. I was able to, to the detail, the, the structure was just wow, my phone was buzzing like mad. People were ringing me. I'm sorry guys, I couldn't answer. I was literally flying the drone. Uh, was multi, too, many, too much stuff to do. And their NLCs with that bright, they're reflecting off the lock here. They're illuminating Rue and my dog. She was like literally glowing by the NLCs. Silver, classic electric blue. And then along the north, northwest horizon was a beautiful yellowy orange bed of atmospheric glory in the post sunset uh, lingering sky with the NLCs above them. It was so stunning. And the structures to the north were just remarkable. These large scale worlds and huge bands and herringbone structure very three-dimensional, constantly changing all the time. It's still ongoing here now. It's dropped down in height, but it's still bright. Definitely type five brightness without a question. Um, I'm just astonished because we should not be seeing an NLC display of this caliber in, in uh, 2024 and solar maximum. Uh, honestly, we should not be seeing something of this size. I, I'm literally blown away. This is an our personal record. I'm sure people all over the country, over the UK and Europe are seeing this right now and are just as blown away as I am. But, and the reason is that if you look at spaceweather.com from the, a day ago, they had an article out about this and they were saying that the Tonga explosion, which happened earlier in the year, the underwater volcanic eruption, actually threw a tremendous amount of uh, water into the upper atmosphere, water vapor. So the, so the mesosphere has actually got water droplets and it exceeded this year by large quantities of water, which shouldn't normally be there. So because of this violent freak of nature, an under, undersea volcano, we're now seeing NLCs. So that volcano technically caused these NLC displays. Even though the, the conditions which cause the NLCs are the same, they're dust, tiny dust particles from space that come down through the atmosphere from comets and asteroids, ancient material, four, four and a half billion years old. And it falls into the upper atmosphere. The upper atmosphere is so cold in the mesosphere, minus 100 degrees or below, it gets encased in ice crystals and then these uh, particles reflect sunlight from below the horizon. So that's essentially what's causing it. Combine that with upper atmospheric ones, gravity waves, and of course this extra moisture from the, t the Tonga event, and you have a remarkable scenario here. I literally cannot believe it. I was hoping I would see a display tonight, 
I honestly thought this entire season, I'll not see very much excitement in MLCs at all. Maybe one or two okay displays to keep me going for the years ahead. But this was beyond expectations. Full on the wide angle field of the view of the drone. Just just stupendous, beautiful, remarkable. I'm, I'm buzzing here, you, you can tell. Anyway, I've said enough. Um, I hope you enjoyed the drone footage. I don't know what, it's, what it looks like but at the minute. I don't know if it's too noisy or not. We'll, we'll see later on the computer. And uh, anyway, I put some nice tranquil sounds and music on it, and I hope you enjoy it. So uh, I had the Mavic 3 Classic in there, there, just full wide angle manual settings, just incredible. What a night! So, Rio's in for a shock, she's sleeping here at the minute now. She wasn't expecting this tonight, around the she's in bed. So, what I'm gonna do is, I've got a camera time lapse by the lock, I'm gonna go back out and have, take a look at it now. And then, uh, these NLCs may actually improve again before dawn and get bigger, so we're going to reposition and get a better horizon. Wow, what a night. Okay, it's 20 past 1 in the morning. I'm just using my mobile phone here. The NLCs have dropped in height considerably, but they're still visible below Capella. Incredibly bright, definitely at least type 4 brightness at the minute. Vivid brightness, like really strong silvery white colours with hints of blue and very subtle yellowy green colours low down. Large scale worlds here. I'm not seeing the horizon here. I'm at Loch Fay. There's a horizon the hill here, trees blocking the actual horizon. But there's large, uh, oh, great structure on the right here. This death here reminds me of parts of 2009. And it goes right across here. Look at that. Remarkable. So what I think I'm going to do is, I think this area here is just going to take off again. When the, sky, when the sun starts to rise up a little bit, maybe in an hour or so, this could be spectacular. So I'm going to reposition up a road somewhere with a better horizon. But, uh, camera working away. Okay, so it's now after two o'clock in the morning. This exceptional display is still ongoing and it is absolutely remarkable. I had the drone up there again. I just couldn't resist getting in the air and trying some video. Uh, I got a time lapse run on here with a full frame camera with 50mm lens. I'm sort of focused at a time lapse of this region here, which was incredible. Now I'm focused on this sector. It's going the way across the sky. Um, this phone doesn't do it justice, of course, because it's a super wide angle and an old crappy phone, but with the naked eye at the minute, this is type 4 brightness. The sky is pretty dark, and I'm looking, I'm on the other side of Loch Fay, looking northwest, north, northeast. The distant lights there belong to the quarry, and there's a few wind turbines there from the wind farm. But look at the colours. In the naked eye, I can see electric blue, white, orange down at the bottom, yellow above that. Tinges of green, and the structure to the left here, there's we have very very long bands, soft edged 2A bands and hard edged 2B bands. Below that, we have the classic herringbone structure, uh, also known as waves, or akin to sand ripples on a beach at low tide. And below that, we have very long bands crisscrossing the sky. Or as we move to the right, it becomes more and more complex. And we have these vivid knots with the herringbone structure overlapping huge um, billows and whirls. The whirls are actually large scale whirls. I'm measuring them here between 10 and 15 degrees high, so they're pretty tall. And definitely, this is, uh, this is on par with some of the best displays I've seen during 2009 in the Solar Maximum. I just cannot believe I'm seeing this with a solar maximum approaching. Completely unexpected, absolutely incredible. Uh, the star up Capella is just up here, you won't see it in the phone. But this is gorgeous, and to have such a beautiful clear night is just remarkable. I see everyone in the country is out the night imaging this. But this is stunning and way beyond anything I expected this season. 
there's been nothing of this calibre over the last few years, maybe maybe even the last five years, I would say, from Northern Ireland, at least. This is just unbelievable. That structure in the northeast is just moving by the second. Wow. It's just stupendous. I, I'm stuck for words. And there's the moon. And of course, I did a check on T Corona Borealis and the north, at way into the. Uh, South, southwest now, high overhead, just done a check and it, it's behaving itself. But wow, what a show! Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse this light. Just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I tell you, if no one's ever, if you live in a part of the world where you don't get NLCs, then you really don't know what you're missing. They are absolutely incredible. There's something about them otherworldly. The luminosity of them is about on night time, and no one that's actually cometary dust particles from the tails and comey of comets passing through the early solar system encased in ice crystals reflecting the sunlight even though it's night time here these clouds are so high in the mesosphere over 82 kilometers high they're actually still catching the sun so for them the sun hasn't set but for us obviously it has but as long as the sun's between 6 and 16 degrees below the horizon NLCs can be seen but only in the summertime when the upper atmosphere and the mesosphere begins to cool down and you get this water vapor turned to ice but it's completely unpredictable exactly what's going to happen, what you're going to see from night to night. But this is just wow, 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 wow. I really hope uh, my time lapse is pretty is cool and showing that structure pretty well. See this? I've just passed the darkest part of the night now. Actually, I've noticed these clouds are starting to slightly brighten again. The NLCs are probably transitioning soon from a Type 4 brightness and they'll probably end up Type 5 again. And they're growing in altitude again as the sun begins to rise. So, so it's about. Uh, uh, what did I say? A quarter past two. I reckon we've not a half hour to an hour at most before they get bright again. So this here is just wow over here. <laughs> Stupendous.
half two and three o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna be packing it up soon. The structure just remains incredible. These world's knots and these vertical chimneys or fountains just going straight up with herringbone, sand ripples on the beach going right across the middle of it. The dark forms in the middle almost look like, almost looked like a stovepipe tornado at one stage. <laughs> right across the sky. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Still buzzing and still can't believe what I've seen tonight. This goes to show you how unpredictable molar nature is, how unpredictable noctilus and clouds can be, and how incredible they can be. Tonight, visually, they were 10 out of 10. Photographically, 10 out of 10. You can see the nice orange glow, orange yellow glow on the horizon again, where the sun's going to be coming up later. Just remarkable stuff, absolutely remarkable. I called a night soon, but uh, astonished. <laughs> wow. This one night has actually saved the entire summer. It's been very quiet since we had our last storms in May and we had our big G5 Aurora in May. Then nature's been very quiet and running around ever since. And I was beginning to lose faith something cool was going to happen. And then this here just randomly shows up tonight and just blows the socks off me completely. Honestly. Wow. <laughs> and with that, I think I'll call it a night and I hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoyed the drone footage and some of the time lapse. Um, my dog is sleeping in the van and I'm going to go home and sleep soon too, but I probably won't sleep thinking about this. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you all for watching and I hope this shows you how incredible Noctilus and Clouds can be. People always said to me, people say to me, and you see it on some of the forums and Facebook groups too, about, I'm confused about NLCs. Do you have NLCs in this image tonight? They can't tell the difference between NLC and normal weather clouds. The answer to that is, just wait and see, you'll know NLCs when they appear, and tonight is a classic example of that. Anyone who looked out the window tonight, saw that sky glowing with these colours and structures, will know something strange is going on. This is not normal. This is NLCs. in the morning and I'm gonna call the night.
it's, it's just amazing, constantly evolving. I'll probably stop in the road on the way back and have another look. But uh, what a night!